my mum is hiding in the dark here. You can't see her, my personal chauffeur. <laughs> We're on our way today to River Hill Gardens in Kent, which is famous for azaleas and rhododendrons. And it's the best time of year to see them. So hopefully we're gonna see them. The weather today is beautiful. For the first time in, what, like three weeks? <laughs> I, bought, I bought a Factor 50 face cream and from every day since it's rained. But today we have blue skies ahead. I think it's gonna be really beautiful. And looking forward to showing you all what we're gonna see. These are some of the smallest azalea flowers I think I've ever seen. They're so cute. Been here five minutes, we're already lost. Um, We've seen this giant kimchi pop before. <laughs> this fairy might need to see a structural engineer. I need to learn what all these different varieties of fern are called so that we can get them planted up in our garden in the dark bits because I can see three varieties just here gives you an idea of the uh, scale of some of these rhododendrons <laughs> these like lovely archways mm -hmm. formed by the big Shrubs. <laughs> Tree top rhododendrons. This is kind of this mix of natural planting where you've got much older specimens like this oak tree here which is probably maybe 150, 200 years old and then they've planted azaleas and rhododendrons and other varieties and monkey puzzle trees and stuff around them. Kind of this effect of like um, naturalized planting. Yeah. It's very informal, it's really lovely. Uh oh, there's a maze. Right, let's go in the maze. <laughs> to cheat. Mount Everest is 7,403 kilometres away and covered in human faeces and corpses. I think I'd rather be here on a day like this. The big few centuries old sweet chestnut here. Which is good. I don't think we have enough sweet chestnuts in the UK because they're not really like a staple part of our diet like they are in some other countries. That is gorgeous. Look, at, look that. at the circumference on this sweet chestnut. I just love that texture. Yeah. Because in, in France they eat sweet chestnut quite a lot. You can get it as in a can as a paste. Then in Japan you can buy them 
pre-cooked in pouches from the 100 yen store. The only people who eat sweet chestnuts, in the, or the only time people eat sweet chestnuts in the UK is for Christmas dinner. I know, it's weird, isn't it? It's weird. They're quite nice, freshly roasted. That's true. It's a pain to peel, but <laughs> right, which way? This way? That's gorgeous. And look at the difference between those and the things we call bluebells in our garden. Yeah, because these are the these English are bluebells. bluebells. These are English bluebells, and at home we have Spanish or hybrid bluebells, which are introduced species. Loving this tree here that's been uprooted, but it's still alive. It's still got living uh, leaves on it. It's a good uh, lesson for all of us. Even if you're uprooted, keep going. Wisteria wall. I like wisteria, but you're not really into it, are you? Uh, well, the one we had never flowered. <laughs> I, I do like, I do like it when it's like this. I wouldn't mind an arch, a wisteria arch. That'd be really cool. I think we should do that. Then. Oh wow! Look at the um, honey ball. Gorgeous! Look at the seed pods. They're incredible. Robots in disguise. All these allium flowers just about to pop. Look at the bark on this birch as well. It almost looks like seaweed. Um, prunus. Prunus? Yeah. Oh, it's a plum then. Cerula. I thought it was a type oh, of birch. Cherry. I thought prunus was plum. Oh. Prunus is plum, but then cherries come in that category as well. Mm. Just noticed that they're using willow balls as a natural support for their peonies. They've got all these beautiful peony bushes that are just about to flower. We're just a little bit too early for the peonies. But yeah, they're using willow to support them. So that's a cool use of natural material. They've got a black elder like us. It's a bit smaller than mine. You're done. You've got it. Done with the garden. <laughs> Bye. Thank you. My dose of beauty for the week. Your dose of beauty. <laughs> what, hanging out with me? And there's even pretty flowers on the way out. Really? These are good planning. So here are the essential facts you need to know about River Hill Himalayan Gardens. First of all, the site itself is not too big. It's 12 acres in total, which translates to about an hour to an hour and a half of walking around. So if you're lower stamina or just don't have the patience for a huge garden, it's great for you. There's lots of activities there for children with an outdoor play area, den building in the woods and even a resident yeti who comes out at weekends. But because of the number of steps around it's not really suitable for very young children and babies in push chairs. All of the steps also make it not a good choice for visitors with mobility issues and especially wheelchair users. As a wheelchair user, I don't think you could see even maybe 20% of the garden, so it's really not worth visiting. However, dogs are very welcome. It's a dog-friendly garden. The owners are dog-friendly and they wanted to make it a dog-friendly space, so feel free to bring your dog. The best time to visit is probably around this time, May. Uh, the garden is famous for its azaleas and its rhododendrons but there's also a lot of roses around and peonies so there will be floral displays throughout the summer at the moment the cafe is only offering teas coffees and cake but there's plenty of pubs and restaurants within a 10 minute drive of the site so if you wanted to have lunch after a morning spent wandering around the grounds it'll be easy to find somewhere to eat <laughs> 